Thank you for listening to the BJJ Brick Podcast. We'll be bringing you Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and good times. We hope to flatten your Jiu-Jitsu learning curve, help you get the most out of your grappling ability, and meet your goals both on and off the mat. Welcome back, my friends, to episode 71 of the BJJ Brick Podcast. Today we have an interview with Hobson Mora, and I am here with Gary. My name is Byron. Gary, what's up, man? Hey, doing great. How about you? I'm doing good. Can't beat be, that. Be another great show. Really excited to have Hobson Mora on the podcast. Yeah, we're very excited about that. Um, Hobson is a world-class athlete, so uh, we, we're very uh, privileged to have him on. Yeah, besides winning uh, eight world titles. Eight. Eight. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he did some other really amazing things with his career. He went from brown belt, and then he got his black belt, and that year he won the black belt uh, ch- world championship title. And then he competed, and then he took a little break, and he, he competed two thousand, uh, the year 2001 at the black belt level, and then came back in the year 2007 and won it again. <laughs> That's impressive. That, that just seems crazy. <laughs> Taking seven years and then coming back, yeah, and being just as dominant. <laughs> An incredible athlete, and it's going to be—it's it, a really cool interview because now he's he's taking a, a a little bit of a different perspective as far as the the competitor he was to now that the coach and the um and the and the training partner and trainer uh, role, and, and and he's got all perspectives, so it's really cool. So definitely stay tuned for that part of the part of our show. Gary, we do have a couple of uh, free audio books available for download about jiu-jitsu. It's kind of like a little short podcast that uh, if, you, if you want a little bit more information about jiu-jitsu or you think it might help you out, we've got some that'll help you compete, some that'll help you uh, change your game up a little bit. Um, the best way to do it, they're about 20 minutes each, uh, is to go to the website or go to the Facebook page, and there's a little place to put your email and name. Uh, sign up there, and on on Tuesdays, we'll send out an email uh, with the show notes from the podcast at the very bottom of that, there is a link to a folder where they're all available to download. So it's pretty easy. Uh, I, there's a little bit of de- delay. If you sign up on Wednesday, you'll have to wait a little while to get the email, but whatever. It'll, it'll show up in a week. So Yeah, you just have to wait till Byron gets out of work to send the email. So. <laughs> You'll that's, get it. That's about the best way I can figure out how to how to do that, and and, and this is a low budget deal. If I had to, if I had some money behind it, you know, I, you could send out like an automatic email so you just sign up. But uh, that's not yeah, that big a deal. It, it gets so bad sometimes. Byron and I don't even have pockets. Yeah, we don't even. Yeah. Our pockets are are all worn out. Yeah, we can't even put money in it. We yeah. have none. And my gi, it, it doesn't have a pocket. Yeah, that's well, you well. could make one, but you'll break somebody's finger. That's true. Maybe be like one of those inside pockets that'd be good. That's a good idea. Put your mouthpiece in there. Actually, I bet, yeah. Put your wallet in there, your cell phone. <laughs> well, I don't know about the cell phone. You can listen to the podcast while you roll with your, with your phone in your pocket there. Yeah. Learn how to uh, stop the, the cord choke. Or to start the cord choke on somebody else with your cord. Yeah, that'll work. The microphone cord, yeah. Or the uh, earphones cord. Just yeah, like so Byron many said things last are happening. Week, when I'm on the show, I take it in all different directions. That's true. <laughs> it, it, it does help out, and it makes it more fun for me and you. I think so. Definitely. <laughs> and if it's not fun, man, it's 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 not. Uh, that's not why we're here, man. It. Yeah, we're having a good time. Gary, let's go ahead and get our quote of the week from Isaac Doderline. Uh, rolling here. Yes, my favorite quote is: uh, "Every champion was once a contender that refused to give up." I think yeah, it's Rocky Balboa in one of his movies. <laughs> yeah, and what does that mean to you? Um, because it's, it's very, as, as a contender, as someone who's trying to get to the top, you see that top level guy and you say like, man, like, how am I going to get there? You know, you see Cabrinha, you see Rodolfo Vieira, Leandro Lowe, and you say, man, like those guys are so high up there. How am I going to do it? You know, those guys, they smash everybody. They're so good. But then you got to just tell yourself like, man, at one point they're trying to do the same thing. You know, yeah, right? they were just trying to do the same thing you're trying to do, and then they made it. You know, and you just gotta say, like I was, like they were in my shoes at one point, and that motivates me to say, you know what, like if they did it, I can do it too. You know, it kind of humanizes them and, and takes away like the the mystery of what they Ex- exactly. That's exactly yeah. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah, that I I 
I tell myself that before every competition, you know. Or, um, I, I tell myself that every day. Actually, I have that. My my wife for my birthday last year, she gave me a brown belt, and that quote is on my belt. So even when I'm competing, I have that quote, and like I'll be like I'll be exhausted, I'll be tying my belt, and I'll look down, and I'll say. I'll read that and I'll be like, it just pumps me up and I say, yeah, you know? <laughs> That's cool, man. <laughs> yeah, that it really it really helps a lot. It, you know, like, because, you know, when you're tired of competition, you know, sometimes it, negative thoughts start to come in your head, you know, and you got to, and the goal is to keep those things out. So when you look down and you read that belt, you're like, you know what, I don't care how tired I am. Like, I want to be the champion, you know, and I'm going to do what it takes. That's, that's a really cool, uh, thing you have there and have with it on your belt and and you're going to see it when you need to see it mm-hmm. and, and keep yourself out of that uh negative thought so that was isaac Doderline presenting the quote every champion was once a contender that refused to give up man i i do like that i i really love what he said about those guys you know cobrina they were all in his position one time and i think sometimes we get to the point that we just think they came out of nowhere and started killing everybody. And, uh, yeah, they never worked their way up just cause we may not have heard about them till a certain level, but no, they, they were the same boat. They were, uh, they were looking at guys in front of them and saying, boy, how can I get to that position? Cause sometimes I just think that some people are just too good that you can never get there. And that attitude that Isaac has is great there. I'm going to find a way to get there. Those guys were in the same shoes as I was one time. Yeah. I like how he has it written on his belt to where he, when he needs it, it's right there and he'll remember it. Yeah, like you said, he's like right before he gets onto the mat, he looks down, sees it. If he's on the bottom, he's really tired. You know, 30 seconds left in the match, he needs something to, to get him going. He, he looks down and sees it. That, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, or if like he's, I'm picturing him like retying his belt, you know, like they just. Yeah, it's a real yeah, break in action. Break. He's tying his belt back. Yep. It's like, oh yeah, you see that, and it's just like, yeah, I could do this. It's been done before. So that's that's. I like that quote a lot. Yeah, I, I definitely do too, and and I also like the uh, Rocky movies. So uh, plus two there. Plus two. Have you seen all the Rocky movies, Gary? I have. I definitely have. If you have a favorite one? You know, I got to go with the first one. Uh, first ones, just, I think, are always the best. What about you? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I have a hard time. Uh, separating out which Rockies took place, who he fought when. And you're probably right, the first one is better, but... <laughs> I bet if I asked you about jiu-jitsu movies, you could name everything. <laughs> is there... Yeah, probably, maybe. <laughs> if he would have landed a choke in any of the movies, I'd remember that. Well, there. I mean, there were some body slams in, in some of the... I think in the Russian one. Oh, yeah, they got a little personal there. Yeah, you have been Clubber Lang in the time he fought Hulk Hogan. Yeah, Hulk Hogan actually body slammed him. Oh, man. Yeah, but that's illegal in IBJJF rules. The Hogan Slam? Yeah, yep. Were you a little Hulkamaniac when you were a kid, Gary? No, I always liked the bad guys. I was never, uh, <laughs> I never liked the good wrestlers. I liked the bad guys. That's surprising, okay. Yeah. Someone's going to like the bad guys, I guess. Yeah, that was me. All right, Gary, what do we have for our article of the week? Oh, we got a great one. Um, Professor Steve Maxwell, Jiu-Jitsu and the Mature Athlete. And you can find that under uh, Jiu-Jitsu Global Federation, uh, the website, which is JJGF. JJG is in Gary, F is in Federation.com. Uh, go down the page a little bit and you'll see uh, Jiu-Jitsu and the Mature Athlete. Uh, big fan of Steve Maxwell. He's got uh, amazing Jiu-Jitsu and he's also known for having not seen cardio in, in the kettlebells. He, uh, man, I, I think if I, if I were to get in the kettlebells, it'd help me a lot. It's just get just getting that uh, transition over on, into doing it. So, but anyway, a uh, really cool article, and he, he speaks about um, he, he comes at it at all angles. He comes at it from if you're the young grappler grappling with an older person, if you're older uh, grappling with younger or you know heavier or whatever, and then he's like <clears throat> also says that you're going to be there someday. And, and whether you, and the odds are, if you're 45, you're probably not going to be training anymore unless you treat your body right when you're younger. And I, I can tell you, I'm you know being uh, 47, getting ready to turn 48 next week, grappler. I see the difference, or I read all the articles um, that has to do with a mature jujitsu player. And this one really hit home. Basically, everything I've felt, everything I've seen, 
And uh, I actually shared this with a couple of my buddies who are a little bit older grapplers, too. I just think this was a, a great article with a lot of, like you said, great points coming at it from different ways. Yeah. He he mentions when you're in your 20s, you get injured, and it's a day or two, and, you, and you're back on the mat, no worries. But, but when you get a little older... Obviously, it takes longer to, to heal up, and and you feel the effects for, uh, they're just they're just bigger effects, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know what I like the best is um, he, he talks. He makes a point where he says uh, the biggest mistake he sees is middle aged men. How nice of Nicholas, middle aged, <laughs> trying to compete and train like they did when they were younger. And, and I have that all the time. I'm like, boy, you know, I can't train. I can't. You know, I may have dominated. Actually, going against you, I may have been able to beat you, and now I'm getting hurt. Uh, I'm not winning. I'm getting smashed. Uh, and then he says, even worse is when they compare the performances of their younger days and feel disappointed that they can't match it. And I see myself doing that in everything. Uh, as you know, I, I like to play basketball. I see myself in basketball that way. I, I'm not as quick, and in this sport, I'm not as quick. I lose every scramble, and I'm always trying to compare myself to what I could do when I was in my 20s, and it's not a fair comparison. Gary, you may lose every scramble, but it seems like about a third of the scrambles you end up with a Kimura. Uh, another third of them you end up with like a guillotine. Uh, another third, just something else happens. But Well, normally I trend in the kids' class, and I think that's why. Those kids are fast, though. <laughs> but it, it, it's interesting the way he, he comes out this article from a variety of different perspectives and a huge like range of advice that he's giving to older and younger grapplers alike to help them uh, with their teammates or to help them stay on the mat. You know, if you are grappling with an older person, is there really a need to go like 110% and to try to tap somebody out who's older than your parents? You know, uh, really you know just be happy that that this person on the mat training hard and having a good time give them a good role but there's no reason to to try to prove anything uh about what you could do you know to this other grappler who's who's trying to have a good time on the mat and and stay fit and healthy yeah and the other point to that he makes you know like you said comes out from different angles is me being the older grappler if i do have a younger guy who doesn't show a lot of respect to me and is just coming out really trying to smash me, really putting on submissions quickly, torquing him, you know, with every ounce of energy they have. I need to stay away from that person. I There's a – the chance of getting hurt goes up exponentially going against that person. Yeah, and from the younger grapplers – I mean, Gary, uh, you're in a different situation. It, the young guys that come at you too hard um, – you take care of yourself quite well. You're able to just control the match and, and just to e- either knock out a couple of quick submissions or just control the control the guy. And, and when the time's up, it's up. But that's not fun for him either. Like like the guy would be better off if he backed down two or three notches and not get Gary at at his his full capacity. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I, I see where you're going. With but that. there are white belt guys at the you know a little bit older guys who cannot defend themselves that way and they're gonna get and and they still might be bigger or stronger or whatever but you're still gonna get the younger athlete who uh wanting to prove something yeah and i think a lot of times too the older guys especially if you've been in it a while you're up there a little bit higher in belt so a lot of these younger guys you know the belt means a lot You, you know you see you're going up against a guy you know two or three belts higher than you you're gonna give everything you got they, you know, they want to say, "Hey, I did great with that person," and it's to be honest, a lot of times it might be easier to to get one of us older guys. It's uh, we're just not as our cardio normally isn't as good, and you know, we're a step behind sometimes. So I think that's kind of sometimes why we have a target for some of these for some of the younger folks. Yeah, it, it, and he does mention that the younger guys will, will they'll play that game of like not tapping and, and they'll write it out as long as possible and they'll squirm and they'll they'll shake and they'll try to get out of, of everything and as an older practitioner that's probably not a good idea for you anymore and it's not really a good idea for the younger guy either because it does wear, wear you out but yeah definitely uh, you have to learn to tap you have to set your ego aside tapping is your best friend it's going to allow you to get back on the mat the, in a couple days um, most of us older folks don't train every single day we might be every other day so it keeps you back on the mat um, where if i fight a 
fight an arm bar too long, I'm, I'm going to have that pain for the next week or so. As, as he said earlier in the article, I'm not going to heal overnight like I, like I did in my 20s. And uh, the bad thing is today I actually fought an arm bar, which normally I, I tap quick. But today I fought one a little bit, and, and I got out, and I was proud of myself. And then afterwards I was thinking, boy, my arm hurts. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I broke that rule right there today. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure if it's a little bit tighter, you probably would have tapped to, to keep yourself safe there. But it, that's part of part of the game is to see. Yeah, you you have to you have to go both ways. You you have to make sure you can get out of something too. I can't just tap to everything. But so you have to have a partner who may put something down really slow and allow you to get out. And there's that gentleman's agreement. You know, you got me. I, I know that you tap me, but you know, hold the position. Don't crank it. Let me try to get out of it, and so I can at least work that way. But yeah. Today it was a competitive match. We were going at it. We were trying to get each other, and, and uh, I probably should have tapped. And that was my ego getting in there. As he talks about it, so, you know, I was trying to do what I did back when I was in, you know, my younger age. Well, I think that's part, that's part of the fun is to to get out of a near submission before you actually get caught in it. Yeah. Sometimes that's one of the most gratifying parts of the game i i submissions are not are not my most gratifying part of the game i like it when i get out of a submission that i thought is really deep or i get a really sweet sweep those are my two favorite things to do in grappling then why why are you submit me all the time gary this is who's this guy i'm talking to now i don't understand what you're saying that you're not you don't enjoy kimura and me and guillotine to me all the time well this is gentle gary you, uh, know, when you get me on the mat I change. <laughs> he changes <laughs> The wounded cougar comes out. <laughs> the wounded cougar. So, really cool article. He covers so many different uh, aspects of the of the a little bit mature, the mature athlete um, from a very wise perspective. And like Byron said earlier, this article isn't just for the mature athlete. So if you just see the headline and you're like, hey, I'm 18, there's no reason to read this. Man, read this article. Steve Maxwell isn't one of the first black belts uh, in the United States – for no reason whatsoever. Uh, this guy is incredible. He's got a uh, knowledge that the rest of us wish we could have. So definitely, uh, even if you're younger, read this. You'll learn. Yeah, he gives you great tips for training with your with your teammates that, that may be a little bit older, and to preserve your body for the long run. You know, even if you're if you're 22, try to think about doing this for 15, 20 years down the road. You're not going to be able to if you if you play too hard all the time. Yeah. So. And really, at 22, that's not even that long. Like, you know, you get yourself in the 50s. That's Who cares? That's not old yet. So Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, like you're saying, you, you want to make this game last forever. You don't want to kill yourself when you're younger. Do not train like Happy Gilmore trained to get ready for for hockey when he uh, went to the batting cages and had the balls hit him right in the chest to toughen him up. Do not do that for this game. <laughs> I've forgotten about that. I was trying to remember what you were talking about. <laughs> happy Gilmore training. Yeah, he, yeah you got to take so, you on how to take the pain, Gary. Yeah, stay out of the Happy Gilmore training. Yeah, although he did do pretty good. Yeah, he's a tough guy. Yeah, and if it's I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to roll with Happy Gilmore. But he would uh, come at you like a wounded cougar. He tried to stab you, stab you with a skate, didn't he? <laughs> part of it. Cut your lips off. <laughs> uh, all right, and it's a it, uh, really cool article um, on jjgf.com Jesusu Global Federation.com a lot of good information on the website there I'll put a link to it in the show notes uh, check it out there's lots more to go before the interview uh, just a couple of little programming notes here uh, typically I'll, we'll put out a show on Monday and that might change I don't know for sure uh, my wife's schedule has changed a little bit and i try to do i try to work on the show when my wife is at work you know it gives me something to stay busy and then it doesn't interfere with my time with my wife so uh now that she she's off on mondays and sundays so like i don't want to usually spend a lot of time on sunday editing the podcast and getting it up on there but if i could do it ahead of time i will um but i might change the release date uh, a little further down the road to some some other day during the week and make it a little easier on myself so just a little heads up there. If it didn't come out the next couple of Mondays, well, it, we're still trying for every week, but if it didn't come out on Monday, just should be a few more days, and hopefully I'll get something out for you guys. Yeah, we'll definitely have it out every week, and uh, definitely, Byron, you need to uh, need to keep the wife happy. So uh, 
uh, do it on days when she's working. Yeah, keeps me happy too. I mean, I want to spend my, like yeah, time with my wife, yeah, and and I didn't it's mean it that way. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I got <laughs> that. That is a priority. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, but I just, I mean, I, I don't want to be in here on the computer. Uh, your whole Copy and paste in little little sound something. clips. Yeah, when we can go out and have a good time, and I can do that when she's at work. Anyway, anyway, just a little side note. Uh, just heads up, we might change a few things with the schedule. We uh, Gary, we might do uh, a couple more episodes where it's just me and you talking, like getting, like pick a topic and just kind of dive into it more like a in in depth thing without interviews. I don't know what we'll have coming up, but we're, we're keeping our ideas open and and uh, we'll see what we figure out. Yep, definitely. We'll uh, keep trying to bring you the best show we possibly can. Yeah, and we've had uh, some people recommend some coaches to us, and sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. Like Just because you like, like the show and you, and you enjoy it, uh, it, sometimes when I email your coach, if you send me a coach's name and number or whatever, uh, they may not be down for an interview. And like it's, It can be a little intimidating sometimes, and, and, and they may not really be out for that. But I, we do appreciate everybody who sent us, hey, you, you know, message my coach, get a hold of him and, or her. That would be great to get on the podcast. We try, but you know it, it doesn't always work out. But we're always happy to to hear from uh, you know coaches, athletes, and people with just different perspectives on the on the martial arts in general. So uh, a lot of different angles we want to come at with you with on the on the podcast. Yeah, and we it makes it easier for our show. We're always trying to find somebody to interview, and like we were just Byron was just telling me today, he's he's sent emails to a lot of people, hasn't heard back. So. Uh, if you know anybody or yourself, even if yourself's a you know high level jujitsu player, definitely let us know. We'd love to uh, interview you. Yeah, we're, we are always looking for more people. That is one of the harder things about doing a podcast is trying to find the guests to be on the show. Um, so sometimes we might just do some some Baron and Gary episodes and, and kind of just that'd be kind and of fun anyway. Fun. We've done those before and they are a good yep. time. Yep. So that'd take a little bit of the burden off of uh, of podcasting for a little while, maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, let's get with our interview with Hobson Moore because we don't have that kind of experience, Gary. We don't have an eight-time uh, Jiu-Jitsu World Championship experience. Not even close, my friend. <laughs> Not if we combine <laughs> us together. If we multiply our – ex- yeah. Yeah. So, this is a really fun interview with Hobson. I uh, really appreciate him giving us uh, the time here. So, here we go. He is the most interesting grappler in the world. He taught Tyler Durden how to make soap, just because they had extra supplies. He once got a mat burn. It ended up causing a three-alarm fire. When he pulls guard, the ref gives him two points. If you watch his competition footage, you will see Mr. Miyagi looking at him with approval. I don't always listen to podcasts, but when I do, I prefer the BJJ Brick Podcast. Stay listening, my friends. All right, my friends, I'm happy to welcome eight-time world champion Hobson Moore to the BJJ Brick Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to have you on the show and uh, looking forward to, to talking with you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited about it, too. I, I mentioned before, just bringing in here, that you've, you're you eight-time world champion. Uh, you dominated the super featherweight division for quite quite a while, and, and you, you won your first tournament as a black belt. That's an impressive feat there. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and some of your accomplishments? Yeah, yeah. Uh... You know, I have been training, like, for a long time. Like, I started training, I was little, you know, I, and uh, since then, I just started competing right away, you know. I just got a lot, like, about competition, and uh, I was in, like, local local tournaments back home, and uh, so then it's, it's, the thing started getting more serious, started doing, like, you no know, state championship, like, for the national, you know, and then, uh, like, stuff like that, so... um when they have the, the first world championship, like uh, in 1996, and uh, I competed that as a purple belt, and uh, and the next year, like in 1997, I competed as a black belt, you know, and uh, and since then I won, like you know, for so many years. So from 97 uh, all the way to 2000, and I won, like you know, the black belt 
you know, the Black Dog World Championship in my division. So, um, then I got, you know, I took a few years off, I started doing MMA in Japan. I, comp- I fought in Japan for a few years, and then, um, so in 2000, 2007, uh, I decided to, to compete in the World Championship again. And now I competed in California in the World Championship, I won. And then I got too busy doing so many things, you know, and I, you know, I started dedicating myself more to, to my school and my association and everything else, you know. So that's what I've been doing for the last few years of my life, you know. Yeah, you you are a busy guy. You have, I think I counted on on your website, forty seven different schools in your association. I imagine that keeps anybody busy. Well, yeah. Could you describe uh, your style of uh, jujitsu to somebody? Yeah, you know, like uh, I'm kind of the guy. Like when I talk about jujitsu, and then myself step in the mat to train me or or like to compete. Um, I always look for like to finish like as quick as I can. So my idea is like about jujitsu. I think like you know I understand like the jujitsu like you know uh, rules like you know point you know the the advance and the everything. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's a, a good way to like you know to make the jujitsu more professional. Uh, but oh my style, like I'm put a grass, like to try to finish as much, you know, as fast as I can, you know, and just look up for the next fight, you know. And um, I said either way, like on my training, I do the same way. I think like, you know, I look like to reach beyond just like a competition step in the mat. It's like look for like two points, you know, in the hold for like ten minutes and try to win that because it's called like you know the two points of the sweep, you know. I think like I'm more like more glad to step in, you know, and put my jiu-jitsu there and uh, try to finish it. Sometimes, like, you know, you, you can catch, like, you know, you, you can get caught there, the guy can finish you, but in the end of the day, I'm, I'd be more happy to see, like, you know, I did everything I could, look for submission, but, you know, I couldn't get the guy, or, like, I, I did, you know. So, my, I think like, my style is more like jiu-jitsu finish, the, you know, jiu-jitsu, like, points, you know, rules, stuff like that. Do you think that that style has helped you be successful? In- oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. I think, like, you know, like I said, since I was very little, like, I remember my first talks, it always always looked to me, like, you know, and, uh, and it was like, oh, you, you know, you like to finish. It was, uh, that was my style since, like, like, I'm talking about 27 years of training. Um, you know, I think that helped me big time. You know, it's not almost like the start, my style to aggress, to finish the fight, helped me not only inside the match, it helped me like, you know, overall, like outside the match as well, like, you know, to to like to look to finish the thing, like, you know, go ahead and like, you know, make the things happen. You know, I think that was very important to my, my life in general, you know, like inside the match and the outside the match as well, you know. Like, uh, help me out. Like, you're trying to always look for like a definitive end to things and, and complete things. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think like you know my my jujitsu, like you know finishing, like you know my jujitsu aggressively, like you know always look for submission. Yeah. And I take that like outside the net as well. You know, what I'm saying like so. I gotta make things happen. Because sometimes in life, you know, you can. Like, you know, things can be hard. Like, you know, you can face something like, oh, how am I going to deal with this situation? Like, then, like, I use my jiu-jitsu knowledge, my jiu-jitsu finish it to go through, you know, this wall. We just keep going. Like I said, like, I think my my, my, my style on the mat, it helped me overall, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not on a jiu-jitsu compare. I mean, it helped me, like, on, on, like, outside the mat as well, like I said. It helps you focus on the uh, end goal that you have and not worry so much about the little things, maybe? Exactly, yeah, yeah. So you started as a as a kid. Uh, what got you started in jiu-jitsu? My daddy, yeah. My daddy was the big, like, you know, was the guy uh, and he put him on train. I remember, like, I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, 
he was probably, I was 10 years old, he was probably like 12, 13 years old. And uh, we were talking about training, you know, do like karate, because back there the Bruce Lee move was, you know, but it was like, you know, a big fear of Bruce Lee, you know, and, um, and it, you know, we talk about like go to the, you know, training karate. And uh, I came to my dad and said, look, I want to do like a Bruce Lee style, you know. And my dad came to me, said, okay, you want to train? I want to take you to jiu jitsu school. And uh, I didn't know my dad knew about jiu jitsu. I didn't know what jiu jitsu was. You know, I had no idea what he's talking about. I thought it was like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to be the next kung fu guy, you know, like a Bruce Lee guy, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So, and he walked me to a jiu jitsu school and then. The first thing, and the funny thing was when I came to jiu-jitsu school, was on a kid's class. They didn't have kid's class. They just had the dude's class. And it was all mixed. And uh, the first thing I saw was a big guy. He was overweight. He was a blue belt back there. And he was jumping over another guy. He was doing like the jump, like the roll, like we do the warm-up, like front roll, back roll, stuff like that. And he was jumping over this guy. And, uh, and when he did that, and it blew up my mind. Right away, I was, whoa, I, I fall in love right away. And then the next day, I was already training. It was exactly like the next day, I was already in the mat. Since then, like, I took, like, break. I just kept going. And when the, I just found, found, like, what was, you know, the thing I was, li- you know, do for lifetime. And then, and uh, so that's how that thing started. So... When you started as a as a kid, there was no kids class for you to take. Nowadays, I think um, just the way it's it's put in front of children, maybe more. There's more demand for it, perhaps. But a lot of places have kids classes. So what was I mean? Was that challenging as a kid being in the adult class, or do you think it's 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 better for kids today to just have a kids class, or is it good to mix them up a little bit? Uh, I. Th- I think so. It's like for me, back then was a challenge, you know, it was yeah. a big challenge because, you know, when you kid, you want you want to train it, but you want to have some fun as well, you know. And they, my training wasn't like wasn't that fun, you know. And then like <laughs> few times on my on my training, and I I want to give up. Like few times yeah. I came home. And I told my dad, I don't want to do it anymore because no kid over there, they, all they do, they just beat me up, they throw me everywhere. And, uh, you know, they, they, all the guys, they, was, they were like using me as a warm up, you know, they would just flip me over, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that's how pretty much I started learning, you know. And uh, and my dad, like, you know, you got to keep going. He, he was the one, like, kept me training and he did let me, like, you know, quit. Uh, it, it today, like I think, like it's easy for the kids. Like I said, they can have like the kids class. They go there. They got like, a lot of kids with the bed. Kids in the same size, same weight, you know. And they they can have a little fun. The end of the training. It, it's not a big pressure. And uh, I think like today is. Yeah, I think it's more like you know more professional. It's easy to keep the kids training today. You know. Yeah. I, I, you you said it was it was hard to keep going and be motivated because they would just kind of just use you for uh, just to do whatever. When you uh, when you're grappling a kid now, how do you how do you do that? How do you treat that that kid? Uh, I, you know, I, I try to keep as much fun I can for them. Yeah, it's not only for the kids. Honestly, it's not only for the kids for the adults as well. I try to keep as much fun for everybody because. You know, I understand, like, you know, it's, you did such a, a competitive sport, like, you know, it's 1% of the, the, the guy is going to become a champion, you know. And and on the other hand, I see a lot of people want to train me because they want to be part of the school, they want to be a better shape, they want to make new friends, they want to have a life change over there. And I, 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 be, I believe 100% on Jiu Jitsu, the Jiu Jitsu can change that, can give you all these tools. You know, and uh, it's very hard to like to become like uh, you know a champion, like because like I said, there's so many co- competitors. Like every year is more and more and more. You know, and the guys they have been dedicated their whole life. You know, to be on the podium, like on the world championship black belt one day, and then uh, it's like I said, sometimes it takes like ten years, fifteen years for you to be just on the podium. You know what I'm saying? 
And uh, and in my mind, is like that's why, like when I step in a mat to train it or, or to teach my class or seminars or stuff like that, I make sure everybody's gonna have been, uh, you know, fun. Everybody's gonna enjoy the time they're gonna be there. You know, and uh, I, I'm more glad like to have my guys became a jiu-jitsu addictive, jiu-jitsu, like, you know, have the jiu-jitsu be part of their lives, then they became, like, a world champ tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I think, like, the, the you know, that's going to go away. More champs going to come. Next year is going to be changed. Another guy is going to be winning. Next year, another guy is going to be winning. But the jiu-jitsu is going to have, the jiu-jitsu is going to learn, the jiu-jitsu is going to make, like, you're going to change your life. That's going to be with you for a lifetime. So that's my goal today when talking about training, the teaching, you know, and being involved in my school and my association, everything else, you know. You want you want your students to do this for the lifetime, not to just compete uh, and try to get to like that real high level and then kind of uh, lose that drive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that more about the the students' goals, or is that the kind of the uh, atmosphere that you have and you provide to the to the schools or, or how do you get that how do you develop that yeah i think it's more on me honestly it's more on me because i said my whole life i was trained to be a champion my whole life all they told me like you gotta trade three times a day you gotta win this competition you gotta you know you gotta compete every weekend you cannot eat there you cannot do that you cannot you gotta get a good sleeping blah 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 all this you know this thing you gotta you gotta do it to try to be on the top three guys you know what I'm saying and and then if you ask me if that was fun no it wasn't fun yeah it wasn't fun at all you know what I'm saying today when I'm stepping the mat I'm gonna train I had so much fun today I enjoy way more than I was enjoying like you know 10 years ago if you ask me if I could do any, everything again, yes, I would do everything again for sure. You know, because, you know, that's what I was, I love everything I did, but I understand it's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I had the guys come to my school. He's a doctor, right? He has a family. He's busy. How am I going to tell this guy, hey, you got to train three times a day because I want to see you win the world championship? Yeah. And this guy's, this guy's going to look to me and say, whoa, I would love to do that, but unfortunately I can't. So then I'm going to close my eye for this guy because he doesn't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? So my my goal is today is going is go beyond just a competition. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's going like more like a lifestyle. A guy comes to school every day. They want they have to be there. They are in better shape, you know. They they eat better. They are more exciting, you know. They are more. They got more energy to work next day. You can see on this guy's face the way he happy, you know. They they were before, you know, before they start training jujitsu. Yeah, I think that's my that's my main goal right now. You know what I'm saying? That sounds like a good goal and a, a good atmosphere of training and, and and having fun and working hard at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you go to my school, like, the, the environment in my school is, is, you know, it's nice because I have guys, they, 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 they competing, and I have guys, they're not competing, but they're there every day. You know, my guys, they, they go to the school every day, even though they don't want to train it. They say, oh, I feel like my neck a little sore today. I cannot train, but they still go to the school because they want to be there. You know, they want to talk to the friends. They want to have a good time. So, the environment I'm, I, I, you know, I'm making my school is the one like everyone is going to be there. So like yesterday, I was teaching a class yesterday and then uh, my, my fundamentals class, the, this old man, he walked into the school, 70 years old, 70 years old, yeah. in front of us, good shape, and he told me, can I train it? Can I try the class? I was so happy. I said, oh, yeah, for sure. And he tried the class, and I was working on the side. He did, like, martial arts for many, many years. He did, like, you know, judo, aikendo. He studied, like, you know, a little, a little bit of Brazilian trips years ago. And, uh, and this guy came to me, and, and after the class, he told me, like, oh, I love your school. That's one of the best schools I have been working in my life. He's seven years old. 
So I'm, you know, I'm just a baby compared to a guy like me. Like I had way more to learn from him. They're gonna give to him. You know, what I'm, saying? I'm talking about not about like only to teach. I'm talking about life. Yeah. You know, and then it, it, when he told me like that, I was so happy. You know, and then and he, what he did, he came into the, the my 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 staff and he signed up right away. He signed up. Now he's become part of the school. You know, and uh, he's seven years old. You know what I'm saying? So. That's like I said, I want to just be able to help people the way they do to help me. I want to use it to do to help everybody else. If they want to be a champ, yeah, they'll be there with you. I'm going to give my 100% for you to help you to accomplish your goal. If you tell me you don't want to be a champ, just want to be training to be a jiu-jitsu, you know, jiu-jitsu life change, jiu-jitsu training or anything you decide to do, I'll be there, you know, to support you 100% anyways too. Well, I love that story about the... The guy who's seven years old. It really shows that you know the, they say you just do this for everybody, it, you know, and that's that's a really great example of that. And, and then he comes into your school and he and he's, you know, you could tell he had been to a lot of different martial arts schools in his lifetime. You know, he, he said he did martial other martial, and he loved your school and he loved the the way you guys were and, and, and the atmosphere that was created there. That's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about your uh, competition uh, background. You, it, it seems like it's very difficult for a brown belt, even if they're they're winning all their all their uh, divisions and all these tournaments, and then they when they get the black belt, it's so hard for them, them to win that first year as a black belt, just because all the guys that were before them that brown belt are are there waiting for them and getting better every time. How do you have any idea like what the key to that to your success in doing that was? Yeah, I think like, you know, also it's not like a, a key. I think it's a hard work, like yeah. we talked about before. It's a lot of education, you know. Like, I always look like a, a interview about, like, a Mario Hayes. Yeah. You know, Mario Hayes is a top five guy on his division for the last, last 15 years, you know. And then he did it. His one interview was looking, and he told Oh, he's interested. He said for the last ten years of his life, he has been on the podium on the world championship, but third place, second place. But most of that was in third place. So now we're talking about a top five guy dedicated his his life for ten years to be on the you know on between the thirty top you know the three top guys on the individual. That's ten years. So. Again, like you know, it's it's a tough game. Like you know, I think like I I know I push everybody to try for sure. You know, you gotta you gotta give your try, uh, but you gotta know the time. You know, to 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 to, to dedicate yourself to something else as well. You know, what I'm saying because again, like you know, times go so fast, and sometimes you're gonna spend like you know, 10, 15, 15 years of your life try to 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 re a big competition, like you know, win the world championship as a black belt. That's a dream for everybody. And then, so then you realize the times keep going, keep going, and you, you not make it. Not because you're not doing a good job, and pretty sure you do a fantastic job, but it's everybody's doing a good job as well. You know, you cannot blame yourself, like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm doing something wrong, what happened, my training is not good, my structure is not giving, like, the attention it should give to me. It's not all that. It's a combination of things. Like you know, it's a lot of things going on. But you know, it's, like I said, it's not like a, a secret. You gotta, you gotta put your time and educate yourself. Like you know, and give up. So a lot of things you gotta give up to put your time on. That. And then sometimes you know you're gonna make a few years later. If you just say, "Oh, I couldn't do it." I couldn't do it. I try again my best, but I couldn't do it. So maybe it's time for me to like help and other people to to accomplish this goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just think like you know, it's, I don't know if it works. Like you spend like ten times of your life try to do something like that. It's just you cannot do it. You keep going, keep going, keep going. And when you open your eyes, maybe it's too late for you to do something else. You know. You know, like I said, that's my my point. It's hard. It's hard to say too because I, you know, every time I start, you know, I step the world championship, I had to step through, like you know, and uh, I was able to to win, you know. Um, I think like the game has been changed such a big time. You know, I think like for my time to to 
Chuchu Day, everything's changed, you know? So, uh... You mean just you the... Gotta, you gotta be following the change. Just, you mean technique-wise, or the, the the rules? What's changed that, that really catches your eye? Honestly, I think the fighters, I think, like, the mentality of people has today's change. Uh... Like, you know, back in the years, I think, like, we had more, like, we had the jiu-jitsu fighters. We had the guys going to go to competition, and they're going to fight for 10 minutes. They're going to look 10 minutes to finish the fight. So we're so excited, you know. Everybody was so excited about that. So even though you don't know jiu-jitsu, like, you have no idea, you don't know how the rules, you don't know how jiu-jitsu work, but you go to, like, the world championship, you, you see, like, a black, be- a black belt mat, you know, you see, like, so excited like you, you get your attention there you know it's, it's coming fun for you as well but today things change I think to, to the guys today the fighters from today they're like so concentrated to win and they'll they play the rules they, they use the rules to be a champ they are not use the judges they have to be a champ you know what I'm saying and I, I think like the judges they have it's, it's way stronger than the rules if they put in their mind, okay, I'm going to go there, I'm going to use my jiu-jitsu, I'm going to use what I have been doing every day on my training, and they're going to win. I think the, the fight's going to be way more exciting. You know, the jiu-jitsu going to win way more if we start going for this direction. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, th- I think, again, I think that's my point. I think, like, you know, if I had to describe that, I would say, like, Back in the years, we had the jiu-jitsu fighters. We had the jiu-jitsu, you know, fighters, the real jiu-jitsu fighters. I'm not saying the guys are real. I think, like, physically and mentally, these guys from today, they are way more prepared. Yeah. Right? But I think, I think like, the jiu-jitsu hungry, the jiu-jitsu come from inside you, like, to finish. I think back in the years, we had more of that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that's probably the way, the better way to explain that to me, like, you know. I'll put this way. That so I, I like what you said there. That their their jujitsu is stronger and, and better than the than the rules. So don't play to the rules. Play to your jujitsu and and use that to win the match, not the rules. That, that's a, yeah, yeah. I, I really like that the way you put that. And 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 I, and I compare a guy like you with some of the guys today that will. And you know they they like to or they're comfortable winning by points or an advantage, and you like to go uh, for the quick submission. So if you have several matches and they're they're quick matches, um, I'd imagine you're a lot more fresh and and ready to go than, than the than the person who has competed a lot of times and they're they've gone the full ten minutes. So that's another yeah advantage. exactly yeah yeah you, again like, I think the, the the rules again like. The rules is there. You gotta you gotta use the rules, right? The yeah. rules is there to use the rules. I do understand that. You know, I have no problem there. But I think like the mentality. I think the mentality is changing. I think like like I said, to, back in the years, I think like people is like you know, they, everybody want to be a world champ for sure. But everybody want to show the jujitsu they have. Everybody want to step there. Hey, you know. Let me put my jiu-jitsu on. Let me work on my jiu-jitsu because that's how everybody's learning inside the school. That's that's what the jiu-jitsu mentality. Today, the, everybody's like look to be a champion, but they are not showing the jiu-jitsu they have. They are like they just use the rules to help them to become a champion. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, like I think like the 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 the, the you know, to be a champ, that's going to pass. You know, you, you, for sure, you, people's going to always remember you for like, you know, you won like two, three, four, one time the world championship. You're going to be in the history. You know, for sure you will, but I think you're going to you're gonna have a better view. People look to you like 10 years from now, say, man, this guy Jiu-Jitsu was amazing. He was a, a finishing guy. He was always looked for like, you know, the best fight ever. You know, he wasn't a champ, but he was one of the exciting guy to see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I think that's probably in my mind it would be a better sell than you know than to be a champion, you know, just to be like you know a champion. You know. 
we've talked a little bit about how jujitsu has changed, and, and that's a lot of the mentality of it. But in 2000, you you won um, super featherweight black belt, and then you you went to MMA, did some other things. You were busy, and you came back in 2007, and you won it again. That seems amazing. How much had jujitsu or or you? How much change was there that took place in those years? Oh, was, yeah, it was a big change. It uh, was a big change. And uh, also the reason, the reason I did kept going was 2007 when I stepped in the match fight and uh, I felt the guys, they fought me. They were not there to win. They were there to not, you know, uh, uh, be catch. They were not there like to tap out. Yeah. You know, all the fights, I had a good fight. They fought such a good generation, like tough kids. But I think, like, they, like I said, the, the, the feeling I had after one, honestly, wasn't that good a feeling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a feeling, man, this guy, they, they didn't want to win. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, th- I think, like, if you step there in 2005, when I step there, if they step in me, I want to win, you know, if I win, man, I'm going to win this guy. He has been in the history for a long time. So if he lose, I lost. So what the big deal, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's the feeling I had. It honestly, wasn't good feeling. And uh, so then after the, after the, after one, and I just told my wife, and one, it, you know, it's not excited anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's not that excited anymore. I just need to look for something else. So, and, uh, and the chance I had to do, like, a couple of fights after that was more exciting, you know. And uh, everybody fought after that. It was like, you know, I, I look on their eyes, with step in, the way they they move, the way they, they, they come, they, they're aggressive, they, they want to win the fight. So when they want to win the fight, it's making, like, you know, making me more hungry. Those are making, making me more exciting, you know. Um like I said, it was a very good time, you know. I was, you know, I proved to myself I was able to come back and fight again after a few years, uh, after a lot of years without competing. And uh, it was great. Like I said, the, the feeling to just prove it to myself, like, oh, you know, I'm still here, you know, I'm, I'm still can, can step in and like, fight any, any new generation. But the other hand, the feeling they, they, they gave to me they passed with me wasn't that good. So I think that's the reason I may, you know, I may step out and start educating myself so not being so, you know. Yeah. And you've done some super fights after that, uh, 2007. Are you still interested if you have an exciting opponent that's going to gonna bring a fight to you? Are you still interested in competing or are you just so busy with, with your schools now? Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, all look to, like, you know, to, to fight again, you know, I'm mean, always looking to like, you know, to have a good match, like, you know, and uh, right now, like now, like, like I said, I'm so busy with like my association, my school, and I think like the super fight, it, it sounds much better because I can dedicate myself like to compete against one guy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and then uh, it, it, it sounds much better for me right now. And then, like I said, I had I fought like a few months ago. It was very nice, and now I had a good, good, good feeling, good vibration. Everything was working really well. And um, I had a, I had a, like another offer, like a lot of like uh, events. Like they offered me, like you know, they invited me to do a couple more fights. But you know, we couldn't like you know close the deal. Uh, uh, so unfortunately, you know. But I always look for like something good. Like you know, in my dream, probably like you know. Put myself on metamorphosis, that will be a fantastic because that's going to fit pretty well my style. Uh, so maybe like, you know, the guys from metamorphosis, they, they can list that, they can, they can contact me. It'll be, it'll be good, you know. Well, good. I think you, you, th- you like the idea of a 20 minute, uh, no points, just, just submissions format? Yeah, I do love the idea because honestly, if I step there on 20 minutes, you got two things gonna happen. One thing, or I gonna lose by submission, or I gonna win by submission. <laughs> and uh, that's the only two things gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? So if I do fight in 20 minutes, you're gonna see me throw such a big 
variation, I submission, such a big time. Like, you know, again, like, you know, because I think, like, to what I had seen there, like, okay, you go there to Metamori, you know you have 20 minutes to fight, right? So what's the rules? Try to finish. So you gotta try to finish. You got all these leg locks, foot, uh, you know, foot locks, neck, arm bars, everything, like, you know, to try. Plus all the variation, you gotta try. You know, it's, it's for sure, you know, it's like, okay, when you face somebody on your level, it sounds like very hard to do. It. Yes, for sure. But that's why you're there. You're there to check the skills. Yeah. It's about see, you know, the submission skills, see the jiu skills. So that's the idea. So, you know, I pretty sure, like I said, like, I would love to do something like that. Do you I have... Do you have any idea who who you would like to compete against, or if it be gi or no gi, or any ideas? No, no. I, I also I like it both. Like yeah. I like gi, no gi. You know, I think like uh, if I had the chance, you know, with the right guy, you know, the guy is gonna give me like let's say the good feeling. He's gonna step in to, you know, to beat me up, and uh, that would be like for sure, no doubt. I would, I would jump on that for sure. Well, that sounds good. I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure you, you know word's going to get out, and, and you're going to be getting that phone call, and uh, it's going to be. An, yeah. I'll, I'll be looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great. Could you could you kind of walk me through what you do before you uh, compete, like the minutes leading up to to when the match starts, like how you get ready and warm up. Uh, yeah, I had such a good mind. I had a good head when it comes like as a competition, you know. Uh, so when I step in, like, uh, like you know, day before, a few hours before the match, almost like I'm not trying to plan anything. I say, okay, I'm going to go there, I'm going to pull guard, or I'm going to go there, I'm going to be on top. Because sometimes you plan and you go there, things change, and you have to be able to change right away. You know what I'm saying? And then I try to more like, okay, I'm here, I prepare myself like mentally, I prepare myself technically, I'm ready. I'm physically ready, I'm ready. So I'm stuck in the mat, whatever he's gonna bring to me, I'm gonna bring it back to him. I'm gonna be ready for any situation. You know, I, I think like, in the other hand, like, I, I like, I tell my guys, the guys I have in school, the guys they compete, I try to tell them like, hey, you know, try to, to to get a strategy like if you want to be bad or top I try to you know to push that to go to this direction because I, I think it makes sense you know and I'm saying I think I, I, I like but for myself the way I like to fight the way I, you know I look the Jiu Jitsu it doesn't work for me the rule the strategy is simple you go there and you try to win you know and I'm saying and that's the strategy and uh, also like to answer your question, I don't plan anything before. I just try to like relax, calm, just like, stretch a lot because I love to stretch all the time. You need to compete or not compete, and also like, try to stretch out anyway. And then that's that's how I do it. You know, that sounds good. And it, I mean, you, you could tell your the the, uh, the years of, of competition have helped you come at it with that. You know, you're not. It's not hard for you to step on and compete. You're you're, you're ready. You're you're mentally ready, you're physically ready, and you're, and you're confident. So <laughs> that's that's a good place to be in. Yeah, but that, like you know that that is that was like years and years and years competing. Like you know when I was my purple belt, brown belt, and blue belt, I was competing every weekend. It was like every weekend, you know. I was like a competition hunt, and I was always looking for a like competition. I didn't, I didn't care where was the competition, how long it was taking me to go to a competition. I was just going, you know. And uh, but you know, like I said, like, it take a long time to 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 get this, you know, this confidence and everything. Yeah. You know? But everybody, everybody can do it. Yeah. Th- thinking back to your your early competition and how you felt. Um, and, and relating that to people today, what advice would you have to give to somebody who was going to do their first tournament? The advice I give to everybody, like the guy's going to step today, the white belt, he's not competed before, he's a blue belt, and start to put himself on the line now. 
you just try to have as much fun as you can. Yeah. You know, because on the end of, on the end of the day, win or lose, you always gonna win. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna make some new friends, you're gonna get a a, a good experience experience, you're gonna have like the uh a good vibration, how to be like, you know, so many people screaming there, you had to deal with the situation, the anxieties, uh, you know, on the everything, you had to control everything. So I think the, the most important thing is just have fun. You know, go there and enjoy the time you're going to be there. Because you're going to do what you do everything every day in the school, but now you're going to do exactly the same thing with somebody else you don't know, right? Yeah. So it is... If you put a lot of pressure on yourself and you come in there and you start like, just like, you know, put so many pressure, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Everybody's expecting me to win. Everybody's like expect me to do a good job, whatever. So you're not gonna be able to perform the way you're supposed to, the way you have been trained for, you know? I think like, the, 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 my, my advice would be just enjoy and have fun. You know, that would be like the main thing. That's good, I, I like that. It, and it helps keep the, the positive attitude no matter what happens. Exactly, yeah. As, a, as an instructor, when, when you see a new student that comes into the school, uh, why are they usually there? What, what makes them come into a Jiu-Jitsu school today? Honestly, I think like it's everybody want to be part of something. Everybody want to be part of a good place, a good environment. A place you feel comfortable, a place you get in there and make a new friend, people treat you nice, right? And then everyone walking in my school today, he's a white belt, I never saw these guys before in my life. He's off shape, he has no idea about Jiu Jitsu, just watch the Jiu Jitsu like on TV, whatever. When he's walking my school, I look at this guy as my next black belt. On my mind, he's my next black belt. So, so if he's going to make that, he's going to be an ex-black belt, I don't know. That's very hard to do. But one thing I know, I'm going to dedicate myself 100% to make as much fun and much easy for this guy to be a black belt one day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's my main goal. So and people come to my school sometimes, they, they ask me like, hey, uh, the, the question everybody has, right? He's a white belt that comes to school. How long is the agreement? How long was the contract? That's, that's the first question everybody has, right? Yeah. And then my answer is, look, it's as long as you had fun in the school. If you start training here, you have fun for a lifetime, that means your agreement to me is for a lifetime. So if you come to my school, you train for two, three months, they tell me, look, I'm not having fun, I'm not enjoying, it's not nice, it's not what I look for. So no, our agreement is then it's done right there. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, it's my goal. It's not like in my mind. I, I, I yeah, I, I believe on jujitsu 100. percent I know the jujitsu is gonna give this guy what he's looking for. So I'm not afraid about this guy coming to my school and he leaves the next day. You know what I'm saying? If I'm doing a good job and I, you know, I I treat him nice and look, I give him all the tools to make it easy and fun. There's no reason for him to stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you stop. Because life, you know, sometimes stops. You got a job. You got a family. Like you have finance problem, whatever. Sometimes you take a break. But on the end of the day, what happens? Six months from now, or things start getting better, you roll back to the school again. You start training again. You know. So I think that's my many. That's how I look at everybody walk my school. You know. I like that. I like that. And, and you look at the new first day person as. Uh, a future black belt, and 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 you know, it sounds like you know, or you think anyway that if they're not going to have fun with it, they're not going to become a black belt. That's not going to happen. It's too, it's too much hard work mixed in with the fun in order to to get through it all. If it's just just hard work by itself, so you need to uh, really tell them that we're here to have fun and learn and train. But but without the fun, most people aren't going to make it to the black belt level. Yeah, exactly. Not gonna learn. How many times, like, you know, sir, I have guys in my school, I have doctors, lawyers, I have so many, like, you know, professional, successful guys. I mean, how many guys come to the school, I see guys come to me, successful guys, financially, you know, everything. They come to me, say, oh, I hate my job. You know, I see that every day. I see that every day, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then my thing is, like, give, like, you know, because I make these guys have fun, make these guys enjoy the time he's there. That's why my guys come to my school 
every day this guy's there, you know, they're, they're there every day. You know, like I said, even though they don't train it because they got a little injury or they saw a head leak, whatever, they shoot there. Yeah. They shoot the net. You know what I'm saying? I think that, that our job as Jiu-Jitsu instructor, it is make sure, again, the Jiu-Jitsu is going to change people's lives. The Jiu-Jitsu is here to stay. That's what they mean. Jiu-Jitsu is here to stay for a lifetime. So the competition, sometimes they're going to go away. Like I said today, like, you know, the new champs are always going to come. All these new champs are going to flip. The new champs are going to come. Today, you have all these new generations to check. We're talking about the, the first generation, like, you know, uh, 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 Valid Ismail, Roleta, uh, uh, Murilo Bustamante, Fábio Gugel, Zé Maris, Perry, all these guys, they were the, like back in the years, it's just a few people remember these guys. You know what I'm saying? The new generation, they don't remember these guys anymore. And these guys, they were like, you know, the Jiu-Jitsu I call dinosaurs. You know what I'm saying? Then come my generation after that. You know, then come the new generation right here. Uh, you know, it's my mind is like, this is always going to pass. But the jujitsu is not going to pass. It's always yeah. going to stay, you know? Yeah. And it's. I think sometimes it's easier to remember the guys uh, from further back because they uh, they were more, they were exciting, you know? So, yeah, so a champion today who wasn't exciting is easy to forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. <clears throat> what would be a good goal for a student uh, during their first year of jujitsu? I think this, yeah, I'll say, like, you know, the survival. Yeah. You know, come to school and then make sure you do, you, you're going to be on the survival spot. You know, I call, like, you know, the, the way I explain, like, I use the green belt, right? So the guys from my school got a white and I got a green belt between the blue belt. So I call the survival. That's when you learn all the survival skills, how to walk in the mat, how to protect yourself, how to, like, you know, start moving, skate, stuff like that. So then when you go for jiu-jitsu, like a uh, uh, blue belt, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you you look for like a jiu-jitsu ID, like who you are on the jiu-jitsu. Like you, you're a battle guy, you're a top guy, you're half god guy, you're deep half guy. Now you start like look for like, you know, all this thing you know, and it starts combining everything in the same box. You look like, you know, you're gonna start training all the situation to find like which one you feel better, right? So that's how I describe the jiu jitsu in my school. I try to break it down like this way. And uh, and the guys that train today for the first year, you know, it, again, it, it's a survival learn, it's a survival skills, you know? And again, you see guys like, you know, they're 200 pounds, big, strong guys. They come to the school, they start training. What happens to this guy? They feel like, they feel horrible. They feel like, oh man, how come this guy, he's 120 pounds, he's beating me up, he's flipping like that so easily. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, his ego is so down now. Now he's gotta survive, he's gotta go through that to start like, understand how everything start working. You know what I'm saying? So that takes time. So that's why I think like the, the first year, the first you gotta put your mind in concentration with how you survive, like you know how you're gonna protect yourself and everything else. How could somebody uh, get a hold of you or, or follow you? Uh, um, uh, yeah, like you know, I gotta like the, you know, the Facebook page, like you know, the Facebook fan page, my website, all my stuff. So, like, you know, I'm like, you know, I got a guy like uh, my guy, his name is Dougie Kimball. He's like, you know. The, uh, he's, in, uh, he's running my association, he's running all my stuff, like, online. Uh, so, like, I like all my time now, like, uh, I'm putting towards to jiu-jitsu. I'm putting towards, like, you know, to build my association, to build my school. You know, that's why I'm so busy. I travel, like, every, pretty much every weekend to teach seminars, you know, and to, to help people, like, you know, more and more with the jiu-jitsu, you know. They compare those, no compare those, you know, like everybody. And uh, I think the, the easy in the way to get a hold is just like through the Facebook, you know, we like that easy in the best way. Keep up with it. That sounds good. And I'll put a link to that on the show notes. Good. Uh, so wh- where are you located? Wh- where are you located now? Uh, I'm in uh, Wichita, Kansas. Okay. So like, uh, do you train over there? Yeah. Yeah, we... Uh, I'm under Andre Montero. I've, I've been training for, I think, 12 years now. 
Nice. What belt you are? Uh, I got, got my black belt in October. Nice. Congratulations. That's awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's it, awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm still getting used to it. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you, know, you, you always want to be learning, man. Yeah, One yeah. Thing I tell my, my guys every day in the school, like, you know, you step in the mat, like, you... Sometimes you know you get you got upset because the guys mash you, you got beat up, and then you see the guys face you so mad or sad or whatever. And tell the guys, man, you need the bad days. You need the bad days. It's, it's it's so important as a good day of training. You know that's how you learn. You learn the bad days, learn the good days. And the black belt is just like it's it, everybody feel like you're just where you start to learn. That's where you start to like understand what jiu jitsu is about. You know, in, yeah. in, in Jiu Jitsu, it's not only about to step in the mat and to hug it, it to your other head and to, okay, you got to skate for here. If you don't skate, they're going to choke you out. It's beyond that. You know what I'm saying? It's, you gotta, you got to describe it to Jiu for you. You know what I'm saying? So, let's say your new black belt, I'm pretty sure you're going to have such a good time and you're going to have fun. Yeah, that's, you know, that's my the main thing. That's. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's it's it is, it's fun for me, and that's why I'm I'm doing this here. It's it's a lot of fun to get to talk to people like you, and 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 I continue to learn even just by talking to people. But. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for the time, and I uh, hope like one day we can meet. You know, if you if you be in Florida, sometime just stop by my school in time. It'll be love to have well, you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, my man. Well, thank that's you for good. the interview. All right, thank you, man. Yep, have a good day. All right, I want to thank Hobson Moore for giving us the interview. Uh, I hope you guys had as much fun uh, listening to it as I had uh, talking with him there. It, it, one of the big things that stood out to me, you know, you got this amazing athlete, and it, when you're signing up for his gym and, and, you're, and you're wanting to know about the contract, you know, like, you know, how long is the contract for? And, and, and you know, that's a normal question to ask somebody. If you, you know, you, it, it could be a big deal. You're signing a contract, and it, you know, it's, it's, money per month but it's really a contract over like a cell phone like several you know thousands of dollars or whatever over the course of a year or two anyway the, like he said the contract ends when you're no longer having fun at the gym that that's when the contract's up if you're if you're having if you tell come if you can come to him and say it's not fun anymore that's good that's good enough for him he doesn't that's a, that's okay that you want to be done it, it, but if you if you're having fun a contract still in fa- in effect <laughs> that's awesome i i love that attitude and, and he realizes that fun people is going to make his class better he he's having fun if i remember when you got your black belt that was a big thing you kept talking about you need to have fun doing this sport and you have to have fun if if you don't like it why be in it yeah and I and I do I look at a lot of the the lower belts and they and of course they want to become uh, you know better every day and they want to push themselves and and work hard with it and, and everything but it, you, you do a few months of it not being fun and you run a yeah. pretty big risk of not doing any more months of it at all let alone yes. years. I remember when I was younger in my jujitsu journey it wasn't as fun. I there were days where I drug myself to the gym. I. I just wasn't into it, and now it's a whole different story. I, I'd rather do jujitsu than just about anything else. I, I have so much fun doing it. It's, I'm like a kid playing Minecraft. It's a, it's a blast, and that's what it's about to me. Gary, I, you left me. I'm confused here. What, what is the Minecraft? I've heard of this. I don't. Uh, I don't know about it. Yeah, you just don't have a you know a eight year old like I do, or actually seven year old. But um, yeah, it's just a game all these younger kids play on the internet um so that's all there seems like they ever do <laughs> I, I see all the games on my facebook thing you know i've uh okay if you want next time you come over i'm gonna have you sit with connor and you guys can play minecraft he can minecraft me yeah he, he'll show you that's that's good to, that'll be a good experience i if you want to get a hold of us uh bjj break at gmail.com or message us on our facebook page those are both good ways, but you know I've been getting in a little bit of trouble because I don't. I go to our the the BJJ Break Facebook page more than I go to my own personal Facebook page. Uh, I like I've crossed that little barrier because my own personal Facebook page always has like Game of War and and all these other ads. Like it's just so much junk on there. It's uh, I'm getting close to like getting. I'm, I'm not gonna not have a Facebook page, but man, I, I don't check it as often as I used to. Man, Game of War. That's awesome. Have you heard of that thing? No, but it they sounds cool. Super Bowl commercials and like yeah, it's just like ridiculous. I don't know. There's there's a lot of 
Maybe you don't get the ads on yours. I don't know. I don't get the ads. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I use my work computer, so uh, it's probably got a big firewall and everything keeping keeping uh, stuff out. Either that or uh, I'm about to get fired for all the stuff that uh, it's stopping. There you in. go. <laughs> you, you're, but, hey, you got to look at the bright side. That would give me more time to train. But, hey, you know, you gotta, you're always looking up, man. Yep. I mean, missing a job, but you have unlimited training time. Yeah. What's more important? I don't know. I mean, you got you got you do have to keep a roof over your family's head as a food, but you got to train, man. Maybe a few a few months of of real high quality training, and then and then back to work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Gary, we still have some gee patches we're giving away. Definitely, uh, go on to uh, iTunes. Write us a funny review. We always like to hear funny reviews, and. And um, send us an email. Let us know it was you, and we'll get you a patch. If you live in the United States, we uh, don't make any money out of this, so we can't really uh, send them overseas. But we'll gladly uh, get them to you if you live in the United States. Yep. And uh, next week, good news, Gary. I don't know who what we're going to do for the show. Uh, we might have an interview. It might just be you and me. I don't know. But uh, Hops and Mora uh, gives us our quote of the week. Oh, that's awesome. So. so basically get a double dose of hops and more yep not well not quite a full dose the second time around it's you know it's a little bit of a still short quote but it's it's really cool and uh if you enjoyed this interview you're gonna enjoy the quote as well yeah, well speaking of that too if you enjoyed the quote as much as i did on this week's episode with isaac doderline go back and check out last week's episode and and i was telling byron because I, I was not there for the interview. I was actually not here for Hobson's interview either. But that Isaac Dodeline interview was great. So definitely check it out. Check us out on most social medias. We've got Facebook, Twitter. Uh, throw most of our memes on Pinterest, uh, YouTube channel, or wherever else you might think. We might be there. Who knows? Uh, BG to break is, is what you look for. Gary and I are in Wichita, Kansas, if you're ever in the area. Uh, shoot us an email, bjjbrick at gmail.com, and we'll be happy to train with you. Definitely. We'd love it. All right. Catch us next week, my friends. Thanks for listening. Stay sweaty. Thank you for listening. I hope you find the time today to roll. After all, the best way to get better at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs>